This weekend, it's MGC time, and we have a lengthy recap of the show, plus we sing the blues in the woods. I'm Ryan. I'm Andy. And this is Weekend Rental, episode 175. Well, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Weekend Rental, the the annual, much anticipated by us, MGC recap episode, which is, of course, the Midwest Gaming Classic um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which now brags, and I believe it, that it is the largest retro gaming convention and arcade and pinball convention in the United States, which... Really? Based on um, the attendance on Saturday, Saturday, I'd have a hard time arguing that that isn't probably the case. Because, wow, that was a lot of people. That was a shit ton of people. Um, It really made me put into perspective about how much people are missing out on Friday. Because there's nothing you can't get on anything on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar, um, MGC is technically open Saturday and Sunday, but then every year they've, they've done, well, at least as long as I've been going, there's always been a preview night or early access night and not everything is set up. There's no vendor hall, but the majority of the stuff is set up um, as far as like the arcade room and like the history museum. And they, they try to, I think they said they limit ticket sales to that to about 10% of normal capacity. Um, so there's still a good amount of people, but really if you're there to enjoy the arcade stuff and get access to some of that, check out the history museum stuff. Friday night is almost a must anymore. Cause you are not going to get a chance to play the game. Uh, you know, the latest pinball game or the one arcade cabinet. That's your favorite on Saturday and Sunday without at least a good amount of, of waiting for people to get off machines. Mm-hmm. It is. And mm-hmm. this year, even just getting to the machines, there were so many people walking through there. Um, yeah. It was unbelievable. We, we kind of gave up because my, you, well, you and I and our, our sons, well, oldest son in your case, um, we had gone to the Friday night and had a good time and it was, it was busy, but I mean, you could still basically get to any table or arcade you wanted to play. It wasn't a big deal. Um, which is always nice because Stern always unveils their new tables um, or at least close to unveiling. If they're not premiering at the show, it's relatively new. So they, you know, they had the jaws on display this year, which I mean, yeah, if you, if you're not, if you're not paying for Friday night, you really, I, I just couldn't imagine being a person who is into that stuff and it's your first experience and you're only going on Saturday. You'd just, you'd be oh, so frustrated. with it. Yep. It would be, it would be terrible. And you know, and like Friday playing those new pinball machines, those are, you really want to like play them a few times, you know? Oh like yeah. You can't just play one game of the new pinball and really get it. Right. So right. like Friday is nice. Cause you don't really feel pressured to be like, I have to get off this machine. Somebody Especially if you're the it, person you know? who wants to play the deluxe version of the table. Cause there's always fewer mm-hmm. of them and everybody wants those. Um, yeah. I think this year though, and, I like the standard table of jaws more than I liked the deluxe table. I think there wasn't a huge difference. I mean, other than the jaws popping out, but I don't know if there was a whole lot. There was like game one, yeah, one extra was paddle. There? there was one extra paddle on that second floor, but it didn't do much yeah. to change the game for me. Um, I will I could say never that get up there anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I, well, anytime I did, I overlooked the fact that I had a flipper up there and yeah. I was just not using it. Um, I, I will say I thought J- jaws was going to be kind of a lame IP, but I really liked that table. I liked how, mm-hmm. and what I liked about it is like some pinball tables almost require an instruction manual to understand the staging and what you need to do. But Jaws was very straightforward in the point of like, okay, it was clear in the directions. The objectives were clear. You know, you're, you're targeting the shark, you're doing the harpoon attacks. You know, it, it felt very natural to jump into and have a pretty good grasp on what you were supposed to do. Within the first couple games, I think. Um, yep. I liked it a lot. And I liked that, you know, you're just fighting a shark. I mean, it was it was cool. And more often than not, I mean, you were going to get a multi-ball at some point, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is which is always fun. You know, there's 
<clears throat> to be pretty liberal on giving those out is I think that's a good idea. Yeah. My only real complaint with it was those rails and the shoots that you needed to hit hit on the right side of the table required you to be very much off the tip of your left flipper. And that was tough to do. Like if you're, if you're the type of person who's not like a hundred percent confident in that, like you just don't want to risk, you know, losing the ball down the hole. So I didn't get a lot of those shots. It was pretty rare if I got one up there. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen another uh, table that just has like a ball. Cause this thematically there's a boat and there's just a pinball in the boat and it's yeah. always there. It just, yeah. You hit the back of the boat and that kind of springs the ball inside the boat up toward some things that you're supposed to hit. That's what triggers jobs. Yeah, it's like a kinetic energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool idea. Yeah, I've seen that on a couple tables, but you don't see it a lot. That's for sure. No. um, My kids had trouble hitting it because they're not getting as good at, you know, like strong shots. Oh, sure. Off the flippers. So it was tough for them to get enough energy for that to to really launch forward enough. But... uh, other than that, I, I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was pretty well placed. Like at least for me, like I was nailing that thing like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. And you know, it's always cool with the new pinball tables how they've licensed you know the video and stuff. So you're getting the one liners and the scenes from the movie that just make you kind of like really get into the theme. So yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn down that table. I, I. As much as it pains me to say it, I think I like that table better than I like the Foo Fighters gameplay. Um, Foo Fighters has a lot of hole shots. Uh, there's a lot of like those balls are sunk and you're fucked. Um, and I like the theme of that one better, but I I went back and played a couple of the Foo Fighters table from last year. And then I was like, nah, I'm just going to go, go back to Jaws because <laughs> I was having way more fun with that. I did. Uh, was it Saturday or f- no, it was Friday night. I got into an insane rhythm on the Beatles pinball table. And I just, I set up like a crushing leaderboard score, like 40 million or something stupid. Really? Just like I I had a multi-ball going for God knows how long. It was the most insane, like ball two run I've ever had. So it was, that's awesome because there was a lot of people playing on that on Saturday. There was like five people deep on yeah. that line on that i'm sure somebody do- just decimated my score on saturday but for friday night i reigned supreme for at least a little while so well that that's the fun part is like when we first got there on friday i was i got the number one score on one i'm like how long is this gonna last you know like an right. hour tops <laughs> hey at least you got your brag in like because i was dead <laughs> next to you so you're like hey look at this look at this i'm like oh nice <laughs> i was secretly pissed because i had just left that table so i was like god oh, really? crushed my score <laughs> yeah my rider and i had been number one so yeah it's funny yeah it was um it was a fun friday night i really liked it and then you know, we went and got lunch, and unfortunately, our food order took like 35 minutes. I think your son was about out of patience about with us waiting for our food immediately after finishing his pizza, which I can't blame him. And the wait we had for our food was not worth it. And then it was funny because the entire time we're waiting, your son's just like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> like, I guess I don't have to wait. And then my son is like, can I have a dollar? Can I have a dollar? And the reason, he, so like, they were both just like, I think not wanting to be sitting there and my son was annoying because he wanted the dollar for an arcade game that was sitting behind us. I was like, no, I'm not giving you a dollar for one. I don't have a dollar bill on me. Um, and we literally just are going back to the greatest like free play arcade possible. <laughs> so that and like it got to the point where like I was basically like threatening to leave him with a homeless person if he didn't stop it. And then the icing on the cake as I text Andy the next day, we went back there with my family to eat and then he got his dollar and then went over to the machine only to realize that it only accepts debit cards <laughs> anyway. So he annoyed Andy and I endlessly the entire time we were there for zero reason at all. It was, it was great. Which is crazy that, I mean, that machine is <clears throat> they're paying 40 cents for transactional fees. On yeah. Cards, you know? it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure nobody uses it. You know, it's gotta be like once a week, some idiot does it. Yeah. Cause who's going to take a credit card or their Apple pay and play a freaking 
arcade game. I don't know. But yeah, and then good that thing goes till midnight on Friday night. So I think both our sons well, and ourselves were pretty well exhausted by the time mm-hmm. Saturday rolled around. But yeah, it was good. I mean we we hung in there though, made it to midnight, so Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, if anybody's on the fence, you have to go Friday, I think. That's yeah. A standard. Yeah, and I think like the part of Midwest Gaming Classic that I've always appreciated the most over other retro conventions is just the fact that they put in the work for the history and the background, like those displays that, you know, show you like cartridges through the years or like write ups on why certain consoles are important. Because it's not just that they have the rare and hard to find stuff. It's, you know, they'll do write ups on all of it. So if that's important to you and getting to play those arcade games are important to you, Friday, yeah have to do it if you're just there to buy shit whatever go saturday actually no sunday they got rid of almost all the vintage computers like remember there used to be like a whole shit ton of old computers like that stuff is not there anymore because it's just like that never got played i think well and i'm sure the wear and tear on it too yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because they used to have a lot of like dos stuff it's like Mm -hmm. you weren't the type of person who understood how to even like execute those games yeah yeah, that's true. I didn't, I didn't think about that, but yeah, they used to have that whole section and that's kind of been overtaken by like land play stuff. Like this year they had mm-hmm. like a whole section just dedicated to Halo. I was yep. jumped in a game with my son. I was just like mercilessly destroying people. It was great. I, I felt yeah, like I, played I, felt for like a I was bit, back in college. I had the worst controller possible. <laughs> I don't know if they had the dead zone set really weird on that one or what, but it was awful. It was not working the way it should have, but yeah. What I thought was interesting this year too, on preview night was like, they actually had, I assume because they ran out of space, two or three vendors in Mm -hmm. that area. So it was weird to see people like purchasing games and shopping um, on that night. But so speaking of that, I mean, when Saturday rolled around and they opened up the vendor hall, that was by far the largest vendor hall they've ever had there. I mean, it was at least a third larger than anything they've done before. It was absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, completely different landscape from the year before, even though like a lot of the usual sellers you'd see weren't there. I thought it was wild that the previous year was like very heavy on like several import resellers that were just doing like PC engine and like Japanese yeah. GameCube. And like, that was all gone this year. Um, the one or two people you did find selling import stuff. Cause I was like, Oh, I'll grab some like dirt cheap, uh, PC engine CD games. Right. Cause I got the analog duo. Every title I pulled out was like $25 or higher. Yeah. It was crazy. And, and just the year before it would have been, the stuff would have been four or five bucks. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know stuff, even like the most like crazy non rare stuff just because yeah. it was import, you know, another five bucks on top of it or 10 bucks. Or, it was just crazy. I did get a little sick to my stomach when I saw that um, GameCube, like Disney uh, Mickey hoops <laughs> game that I traded you like yeah. forever ago. One of the sellers had it for $1,500. and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's not worth fifteen hundred dollars. It's probably several hundred, but yeah. So I was like, God damn! Of course, like I thought I got, I thought it had a good value when I traded it to you for stuff. Oh, and I mean, it's not like I didn't get good stuff back, but it's like uh-huh. the the inflation on GameCube stuff is unreal. So oh yeah, there's there was so much stuff there that it was like I think that's the part that's getting me is. I'm starting to see a lot of the stuff that I used to buy in store, you know, all the time. I yeah. used to be able to find it all the time. And, you know, I sold it for a good amount then, but now it's just crazy right. amounts. And then you're just thinking about, like, if you would have just sat saved on it, all right? those. Yeah. That's the problem now, though, is, like, people are wise to that. So you do get all these people that go to these conventions and they'll just speculatively buy stuff that's, like, mm-hmm. already kind of pricey. But they're like, ah, this is trending and I'm going to, you know. I even heard a guy talk about that when he's walking around the floor talking to his buddy. He's like, yeah, what I do is like, I just watch what's creeping up and like, I just buy it, sit on it and then flip it. And it's like, well, cool. I mean, I get it. We all do it to some extent, but we're all 
creating a massive, massive problem. <laughs> and we probably shouldn't That's be. It's just a bubble at that point. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I think the favorite part of Saturday, the start to the day was the thing that irritated me the year before too, is that you get in, everybody has to get there, right? Got to get in the vendor hall first. So everybody queues up in this massive line. So what happens is this line like snakes back and forth across the vendor hall. But then I get so annoyed because people are so stupid at being like sheeple that they just like they'll walk in the line, not realizing that you don't need to walk 50 feet in the other way to come back to where you're ultimately going to go in. If we all just agree that you stand in place and we peel off and continue to walk when it's our turn, we don't need to do that. (laughs) So I eventually got just fed up with it and I saw the line going back down and it was like 30, 40 yards away. And I just stopped and my wife and my kids, they followed and went all the way to the end. And I just stood there. I was like, Nope, not doing it. Just, I'm not doing it. And I waited until the line came back. I turned and I just walked. And Jill's like, all oh, those people behind you look like my wife. She's like, those people behind you were pissed. They look like they wanted to kill you. I was like, well, they're morons. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. I'm, it's like the littlest things that just take me to like rage. <laughs> but it's so stupid. It's so stupid that people do that. Uh, that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i started off my day with irritating a bunch of people which is probably normal i guess <laughs> that's fine so d- it would, uh, we ran into each other pretty early on so it was kind of nice oh yeah yeah the uh <sighs> yeah the vendor hall was weird because it was it was a lot less games there were, yeah was not a ton of people that were selling games um, yeah, I, it used to be like ninety percent, and now it's like plushies and all this. Yeah, the other prevalence stuff, of three D printed stuff. stuff too. Yeah, so much artist stuff. Um, and then the the cards, the Pokemon cards, and all that stuff is yes. just ridiculous now. Yeah, that was there were too many vendors that were just Pokemon and like D and D, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I could have done without that. Both my stupid kids bought like twenty dollar cards. It's like, oh, they're just a parody. I'm like, you're gonna lose that card. We're never yep. going to resell it. Why are we, why are we buying $20 cards? Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. There was one guy though, that had a whole stack of CRTs, which I thought was hilarious. Yes. Was like, Oh, we're at this point now where they were reasonably priced too. Things. Yeah. Some Assuming of them. he I mean, refurbished the, them. Yeah. Like I'll pay $120 for a refurbished 13 inch. Like, uh, like, um, what are the good ones? The PVMs. Yeah. Yes. I thought about that one, and then I looked down at, like, the big flat screen CRTs on the bottom, and they were, like, $350. I'm like, holy crap. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so, just on a side note to that, um, I was telling Andy before we started recording that my wife and I went and looked at a house that was had an open house for sale today. And I got super excited because we were down in the basement in the storage room, and there was a giant box for a Sony Wega... Uh, like 34 inch. I'm sure there was not a TV in that box, but my mind was just spinning. Like, Oh my God. Like if that TV's in there, like I need this. And then, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that I did think that was interesting that they were selling that a lot less of the, a lot less to almost none, maybe of the, I'm getting out of my collecting. Mm-hmm. Usually there's like three or four of those guys. I don't yeah. know if there was any this year, really. No, um, I wa- the sad part is, is like I was really looking forward to the uh, THC vendor being back with edibles this year uh, and he wasn't back. They didn't have one. So I was like, damn it, I was going to get like a cookie <laughs> and enjoy my enjoy my walk around the vendor hall. But oh, oh. and you didn't you 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 didn't get your tattoo either. Disappointed. No, I know I didn't get my taint tattoo. That's couldn't convince the wife. Otherwise, I'd have totally done it. <laughs> So did you guys pick up much or did you pick up anything in particular? I did not buy a single game. Wow. Which is okay. crazy. Um, and your kids bought some stuff, I'm sure, though. Yeah. Uh, my well, daughter bought, bought a backpack. Okay. She bought a Pikachu backpack. Um, and then the other kids bought cards. You know, they're all into that stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, my son bought a. 
$160 custom painted <laughs> PlayStation 5 controller. So, and then he, as he was bragging, he was going to send pictures and flex to all his friends, his words, not mine. Uh, and then his one friend that he plays Fortnite with, he immediately FaceTimed him when he got home. And then the kid was like, I don't like it. So my son was just pissed. He's like, he's being an asshole. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like maybe just enjoy the controller. I'm like whatever. Yeah. And now don't they're not even it playing. Cause yeah. I was like, so I popped in the last couple of days. I was like, aren't you using your new controller? He's like, well, this season of Fortnite sucks. Maybe next season. I'm like, dude, you spent $160 on a controller and you're not even going to play it. Cause Fortnite sucks right now. Like, come wow. on. Find another game kid. But yeah, that was that was his big purchase. I, I my daughter bought like I don't know, like three little purse bag satchel things and like a bunch of jewelry and t shirts. They I think my wife got a t shirt too. Um so yeah, they she she bought the stuff I would have expected her to get. And then yeah, I I didn't buy much. I bought one three D printed sign. Cause it was kind of like that Nintendo fix it logo or whatever, you know, like the hotline mm-hmm. or helpline. So about that, I put it on the arcade and then I bought two, um, NES homebrews. There's one, like a, you know, it's a copper jacket. But the guy had like, he had made, he had made this homebrew and it was like complete in box and everything. And he only wanted 30 bucks. So like 30 bucks for a homebrew with a box. It's totally worth it. And then I went over to like that, um, I forget the name of the company, but they made like the haunted Halloween and stuff too. Mm-hmm. And they had that full quiet game, which came out last year. I think and I heard some pretty good things about, it, so I bought that and that was it. And then I got some swag from the Nintendo booth because Nintendo was there. Oh, getting out yeah. stuff. Um, so yeah, I spent, I don't even know if I broke a hundred bucks. I, yeah. Uh, so no, I didn't. I came in at under a hundred bucks, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. Considering that's... how much I used to spend. <laughs> I was telling my wife, I was like, I used to like squirrel away like a thousand dollars just so I could blow it all on this thing. And yeah. And how many trips to the ATM? And yeah, it was. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it was pretty wild. It's I changed a lot for us. <laughs> I really wanted some Jaguar stuff, to, like add some new stuff, but there was almost, I didn't see anything really. Yeah. I, I would say like even the stuff I would normally buy, it was definitely, you could definitely tell it's shifting more to the, PS2, Xbox, oh, yeah. GameCube generation. Like that's that mm-hmm. was really where stuff was at. A lot of people buying box consoles too. Like I don't know how many people I saw walking around with box NESs and it's like I don't know. That surprised me because I didn't think that was that hot of a market anymore. But it, we need to talk about this mystery box thing because Oh my gosh, yes. I don't I don't know what scam those people are, are how they got so many people to buy that thing. Yes. I can't imagine there's anything worthwhile in it, in most of those boxes. Yeah. So it was like this vendor that had like, I don't know. They were like God damn near like dorm fridge size boxes that were either NES controller themed or game boy themed on the exterior of the box. There were 50 bucks and they claimed there was an Amazon value of at least $250 in every box and every box was different. And they must have only been there for Saturday because Saturday, like midday, all of a sudden there was a line that was like a hundred people deep. So they must have been doing some sort of like buy one, get one half or some sort of crazy so. deal. No, you think people think were just so. that eager to they buy were, them? They were, I think so. Oh God. Yeah. So everyone you saw walking I, around I, with these, there was one guy. I was that like, that's was a like, great idea. Yeah. But it's ridiculous to have that like that amount of demand where it was just a right like that. Yeah. And, and the idea in theory is like sound, but like, you know, you and I were talking, it's like, well, yeah, you're going to get your money's worth, arguably, but it's not going to be shit you really want. I mean, you're, you're basically taking garbage home. Because I've had yeah, kids who have bought those and previous whatever. years and yeah. It's kitschy stuff. You get one good item and then you get a bunch of stuff. You're like, well, I guess, you know. Yeah. Did you see anyone open them, though? Nope. But I don't Me know what was in them, but I'll have to, I, maybe I should watch a video. I'm sure there's unboxings of it somewhere, but. Well, it wasn't that weren't they running some sort of deal where like one box had like a golden ticket and you got like something 
for it. I think, yeah, I, I think there was one with was. a switch or something in it. I don't know. Oh, no shit. Okay. Yeah. I I looked at that and I was like, for uh, even when I saw the initial price for like 50 bucks, I was kind of like, well, that's probably good. If you like, I fully expected one of my kids to be like, I want one of those. And neither one of them said anything. And I sure as shit didn't have room for it in my car. So. Well, and the fact that to haul that thing around the entire right. all the time too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you weren't staying across the street at a hotel where you could just unload that, that's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. It was Yeah, it was a good show. It's just it was so many people by that time. Like I I honestly feel like I walked through the vendor hall like t- two or three times, but I never really stopped to look at anything. Like especially like mm-hmm. the game the game booths were just so overrun with people yep. just, and I just don't have the ambition anymore to just dig through it. Like I used to, you know, you'd go prepared with what I needed pretty much ever since that app got updated and I lost like my catalog NES collection. I've just kind of given up yeah. on I'm like, I, if I don't know from memory that I certainly don't have it. And even if I don't have it, I'm not going to buy it. I don't know. I'm a retired yeah, collector, I guess. It, it's a, it's a, it's a lot to dig through mm-hmm. on those. I mean, you really have to, and, and each one, some of them are just like bins stacked on top of each other. And then, you know, I like mobile game world a lot, but their, their, uh, setup is not, not Conducive a good to a lot uh, of people for a convention. <laughs> yeah. There were a few booths like that where it's like, well, if I have to like, funnel into a four foot wide u-shaped hole like i'm just i'm sorry i'm not gonna mm-hmm. do that because i don't want to be stuck here or, like grinding up against some dude not not great yeah. yeah did you stay the whole for the whole concert uh yeah we did yeah we saw yeah. you guys left early yeah <laughs> i just like that you did. guys like came and sat down behind us and the first thing he does in the first intermission is science bitch and you we've all got our kids sitting there i was like ah <laughs> yeah so yep. andy's talking about beaker who's like a milwaukee area punk band i would say they're like very heavily influenced by you know um the descendants and that sort of stuff um and generally i've liked their concerts really well because they did like a greatest hits and it was always like you get some descendants and do some blink 182 but for whatever reason i guess i haven't watched them in the last year or two but this year they only did their songs which i know like two of so it was really yeah. disappointing i mean not that their music isn't good but that wasn't what i was expecting because i'd like really sold it to my wife it's like oh it's so good like they play all these songs and they didn't do any of that that's that's i was surprised by that too because yeah i remember they were they were always, always doing that and dead kennedys and a whole bunch of stuff yeah. like that and it, it was from what we saw, there was nothing to that. I oh. wonder if it's like a, cause like a venue has to have some sort of license, right. To, to allow covers to. Oh, really? I think it's a bar thing. I, I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass on this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think it was a weird choice. There though. is something for that, but. And then for whatever reason, they didn't like level check the main singer. So like, you really couldn't hear anything yeah. you're saying the entire time anyway, yeah. which but their new guitar player, oh my god! Like every song they played, he had like a fucking awesome solo. Mm-hmm. That was cool. And their drummer looked like he probably just graduated high school. <laughs> yep. So I did buy their CD this year. So got that. Okay. Yeah, kids were um, complaining about how loud it was, and I'm like, oh, okay, come on. <laughs> my son too. He kept looking over at me. He's like, I can't hear anything. It's just ringing. Is that normal? I'm like, yep. I'm like, welcome to welcome yep. to a concert, that's, bud. That's and he's a like, show. am I supposed to feel it in my chest? I was like, yep. That that's yep. normal, son. So yeah, nobody was impressed, but it was nice to get thirty minutes to just. And then it was like, yeah, not walk around. Yeah. And my kid was said yeah, the was same thing. Bummer. I can't understand what he's saying. It's like, number one, that's maybe good. And number two, that's normal. Right. <laughs> a lot of times. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I here. I yeah, I was with you. I, I thought we were down for like a fun little like, you know, pop punk covers thing, and it was just kind of like, well, all originals. It's like, well, that's fine, but 
Yeah. Not why I came to watch this. I mean, I like Squirrel Killer. I mean, that song is good, but which they end every show with. <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, I guess that's another thing that's fun with MGC is like, there is so much going on because they've got a concert stage going on all day. So you get bands like that or you get people doing like video game covers or like playing live to people playing video games. You know, they're doing the music mm-hmm. and then in the vendor hall, there's like a wrestling arena. So you got like wrestling happening and <laughs> there's just a lot to see and do, which you'll just never have the time. I mean, and that's not even including like all the maker studios and like the panels and it's, yeah, it's got a lot going I, on. They, they're, I feel like they doubled that size of area where the, the people bring in their indie games and yes, kind of showing that. Um, yeah. Cause they've always had like that NES room for dedicated homebrew, but now it's like, yeah, devs for like steam. And I mean, there was probably, yeah. There's two rows. I've been there must have been like 20, 30 games. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. You played it, you know, it's usually a developer there talking about their game and yep, telling you how it works. And there was one that was um, not ready for prime time. I will say. Oh yeah. We played that one too. After I felt you. bad for it. Yeah. The, the one where the, the, yeah, the castle and the, yeah, that one was. Oh, maybe not. The, I was thinking the dinosaur one. Oh, I played the yeah, dinosaur that one is, brawl uh, one too. That one, okay. yeah. There's there's a couple bugs in that, like the direction, like it doesn't change direction very well. Yep. Um, that was a bug, but this other one, it was completely broken. He had to go like, he's like, I don't know how you did that. Um, but yeah, you're stuck. So I need to go <laughs> leave. <laughs> he had to go like reset it. That's funny. Were you playing it or your son? We were both playing it, and he was just both on both okay. sides. He was like, "Oh, uh, this is I don't know. This is not. Yeah, normally you would do this." And he, it's like, "Yep." <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good feedback, I guess, from a development standpoint. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always yeah, fun to see. That's kind of cool. And I like that there's the dedicated NES homebrew stuff. And really, there was a, there's a lot of homebrew there in general. I mean, obviously, you had John Riggs and John Hancock there too, selling their acts and. Mm-hmm stuff so well and that's you know i was telling him amanda that too that like originally it was kind of a, a novel idea to and then be like oh yeah you get a homebrew and you felt like you were like catching you were staying ahead of the game in that but there's yeah. just no way to get them all anymore there's just way too many of them and it's yeah you can't well, even really collect them and now like mgc is like the last couple of years they've always done so for several years like i want to say six or seven they've done a homebrew game that was exclusive to the show through VIG, but now very important gamer, which is like their do all the things package. You get a bunch of extra stuff, including that game every year that's only available at the show. But now they, this year and last year, they've started doing like six or seven homebrews or ROM hacks that are exclusive to MGC. They've got the MGC branding. They're like one of however many. And I think they had like a Jaguar port, something on the Genesis, some more stuff on the NES. And it's just, it's cool, but you're right. It is a ton. I mean, you could probably build a whole collection just buying homebrews at this point. Right. And the thing is, the thing with homebrews, and I'm not trying to be disparaging, is it's very rare that a homebrew is like what I would consider genuinely fun or goes above and beyond. There's a lot of, and and that's not that the, not that the other games don't have merit, but there's just a lot of single screen or just like palette swapped things where it's like, this isn't really another game that you should be charging me $50 for. You know what I mean? Right. You're doing Zelda, you're doing Castlevania, or it's some yeah. really out of the box idea that, like you said, is very simplified, you know? Yeah. I even, to some extent, get irritated with Mega Cat Studios. I like what they do in general, and they've got a lot of games now on Switch. They've ported over that you can pick up cheaper, but they, to me, are kind of notorious for, here's a game on this console that we like. We're going to do the same thing, but slightly different with different graphics. It's like, well, okay, this is, you know, this is your punch out, or this is your kickle cubicle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I get kind of annoyed with some of those releases that they do, but 
but then they'll put out something amazing like coffee crisis or something like that too. So I don't know. There's a time and a place, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty selective about what I pick up as far as homebrew anymore because I've gotten some real duds. Yep. I actually miss that. Um, there's not more like, uh, localized stuff there used to be you know you, you could find like the sweet home conversion or you know something that was exclusive oh, to yeah. the famicom or pc engine that somebody would port over to a u.s version like there was none of that this year you no know, you don't see any of that yeah i wonder if that's like a button and they're buttoning it up to you know if nintendo's there they're like nah you can't have yeah problems here yeah which Nintendo know. might have a whole new problem on their hands based on what uh, Apple's doing now. I mean, not that um, emulation isn't everywhere, but I saw in the news that <clears throat> it sounds like emulation might be coming to iOS legally mm-hmm. like, through their store. So that opens a can of worms. Yep. Especially because there's just such a large market of, I think, casual gamers who just you know they're not doing the things to sideload apps onto their ios so you can make it real easy i'm still questioning though how you get the roms on there though it feels like you'd need to still sideload that somehow because it's not like there's a memory card on the although you could go to a browser and theoretically download it and install it right yeah so. you could you could do some sort of download i'm sure mm-hmm. um which you know the, those type of services would get get cease and desist pretty quickly i think they get yeah, decipher sure. those pretty quick um, but then it always goes back to just like the control. Like, you yeah, know, if you're just yeah, using true. buttons and D pad on the screen, that just sucks anyway. Okay. But yeah. Uh, so did you guys have any like so, major hits among the family? The things that you like there, or blew you away, or entertained the yeah, kids my, in a surprising uh, way? My kids like that. Uh, that uh, what's the racquetball game? That oh, that there. highlight I, thing? Yes, yes. They like that game quite a bit. Um, I found it to be, like, kind of inconsistent as, like... Yeah. To be really competitive at it. I don't think you could really do that, be really competitive at it, but... The presentation um, was great, though. For what it was. For what it was, it was really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I forget what that was. It was called Throwback, I think? Yeah, that sounds right. Kind of like... I mean, it was highlight, but it, it seemed like they were really trying to capture a wind jammers sort of vibe is kind of how I mm-hmm. thought it felt. And it was kind of weird because they had they must have debuted that as a new arcade game. But then they also had a kitty cab version of it, which I thought was kind of funny. So like look like yeah. it basically looked like an arcade one up, which is probably what it was. And they reskinned it um, <laughs> and then true, put yeah. in new parts. But yeah, it was kind of cool to see played. We, my son and I did play a little bit of that. I crushed him. Yep. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, again, the video game, the the video game arcades get less. It, the, well, I don't know if it's a less, but it's just that one kind of row. Yeah. Of arcades. Yeah, the pinball's the really hall. taken over. Yeah. Um, they did step up the Japanese stuff a little bit more. Yeah. I thought that scooter game was uh pretty interesting. The kids love that quite a bit. Um, Which was basically Mario Kart, except you played riding like a kid's scooter and had to like, and you pump had to pump. The, yeah, the pump the pedal on it the whole time, which was fucking exhausting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, th- there was some Japanese game that was basically Mario Party mini games. Did no, you play that one? I did not. It was on one of those uh, candy cabs and it was basically you would just go into this mini game and it was, you know, three, bu- three colored buttons in front of you and it was just different things that you had to press these buttons in order or you had to hit them as fast as you could or whatever. That one was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, you said your, well, your wife said when we had lunch together that she was really into that play date thing. So did you guys yep. order one when you get home? We have not ordered one. I've okay. uh, not brought it up since <laughs> to remind her, but, um, surprise I, Christmas I think that, gift. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. I think that thing is really cool. It's just, you have to wonder like the longevity of it, 
like how long would you actually play those games? But yeah, I still never found it after you guys said it, you know, where it was roughly. And I walked through the, I, I'm sure I'm just yeah. oblivious cause it's so small. It's pretty tiny. Yeah. It's like two inches by two inches <clears throat> basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My son was really into death ball, which death ball mm-hmm. is fucking awesome. So yeah, we yeah. played a lot of death ball. You want to play that every chance he got. Um, he's always really big into like the stupid computer setups too. Like to him, it's just so fascinating. And like that he gets to play like with a mouse and keyboard. He's like, dude, I don't know. Like we don't need to be doing this, but he, uh, we discovered has this weird hidden talent where he's a fucking amazing at Taito's ice cold beer, which is basically a game where it is an arcade game, but it's more of like a, carnival type Mechanical, arcade game i would say yeah. yeah it's 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 you know the backdrop is supposed to be bubbles and beer um so it's like a swiss cheese with holes everywhere and you control using two joysticks like a a, a metal bar that raises up and you have to balance a ball bearing on that <clears throat> and navigate it around the wrong holes which are pitfalls and get it in the exact right hole that you you're supposed to and there's 10 levels or 10 10 holes that you need to work your way up through that progress across this game vertically. And um, I've always liked the game, but find it incredibly difficult. And I don't ever make it past like four. And my son was just like crushing it. I think he got to, he got to 10, never beat 10, but he would consistently get to like levels eight and nine. And you'd pull off these moves where he was just like running the ball vertically and horizontally across the entire play field in ways that like I would have never considered doing. And he did it like so seamlessly. It was wild. And it, that, that entire game hinges on like a panic mode, right? Yes. Like you just panic and then you, you fuck it up. Right. Yeah. But like watching him, he has that panic mode, but he has the reflexes or whatever to know exactly what to do to get it <sighs> yeah. where it needs to go. It's nuts. It's kind of sick. It was I got some video and I threw it up on Twitter. I'm sure some people saw, but I just like was blown away at watching him play that. And like every time you would play, like especially in the Garcade, he'd just like draw a crowd. There'd be like eight people watching like this little kid just <laughs> destroy this game. I think he was mad that he never got 10, but I was like, ah, oh, you can save, save that for next year. Give yourself a challenge. And then he yeah, really wanted I mean, me to buy one of those, you know, with the low, low price of $5,500. <laughs> he could do this at home. So <laughs> Yeah, to get to number nine, and then just to get one more. I mean, once he gets to that, then it's like, well, you did. Yeah, what's, what right. You once you've climbed that? the mountain, you're not going to do it again, right? Yeah. He did end up playing. I don't know. I think this is like later on after it was just him and I. I don't think you guys were there, watched him, but this other guy played the machine next to him and just ran the thing. Like he'd get to ten, start it over, get to ten. It was crazy but he Jeez. he had this weird strategy where his was like super herky jerky like he just like tapped stuff really weird it was a completely different uh-huh. play style but it worked for him so but i suppose yeah, if I, you can kind of bounce the ball i can't really get into a right. hole nicely right yeah it uh it's a great game it's just one of those games that you you don't see the original version anymore for good reason because you know mechanically that thing's got to be a nightmare especially when they were building them back in like the eighties. So, but the new version are very cool, but they break, break down constantly. Yes. <laughs> I swear when we were kids too, and maybe it's just my perspective from being a little kid, but I swear it was bigger. Like I always felt like those things were like double the, I feel like the play field was double the size, but that's probably not correct. And it was probably just cause I was like four, you know, looking at the thing in an arcade. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I would, I think my wife and I, and well, you, even your, your family just watching him play. It's just like, I don't, I don't understand the finesse. Like this is wild. If only that was a skill we could monetize and you could make a living off of that. Mm-hmm. He'd be but, sad. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting year too, in the sense that like it was full of people, but I didn't run into too many people I knew. And I think a lot of that is because we're chasing kids now. Plus you're focused on so many other things, but I, you know, I bumped into the guys, games and beer people, a couple of them just briefly. Um, I ran into Jason, TJ Kasuni and Matt from Mega Math on YouTube. Uh, but there were some other people or we wanted to talk to 
Um, it's rocket sauce. Um, a couple others that I didn't even realize were there until I started looking at Twitter feeds after. And it's like, I didn't, and see any of those people <laughs> isn't it yeah isn't it weird like i even like yeah. even youtubers i didn't see anybody really that's not you yeah well, i'm not a youtuber <laughs> but uh yeah i well i think a lot of it was me because like on saturday it was basically like i need i was like one two three there's kids one two right. three, just kind of like counting heads yeah constantly. yeah you guys are outnumbered so yeah you don't have it's not like my wife, my wife and I, it's just like, we just got each got to keep track of one, but yeah, you guys heads on the swivel. Yeah. I'm sure. And, and all it took, like we lost them constantly. Cause they would just like stop for a second and look at something. And then it would be like, well, the crowds enveloped them. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was basically that second day, like just pretty much always keeping a hand on my son's shoulder. Cause I was like, I, mm-hmm. I'm going to lose you as soon as, cause he would just yeah. walk, you know, he didn't care. And then he'd get mm-hmm. mad at me cause he'd be in the vendor hall and I'd like stop and look at something. He'd walk 10 feet away. He's like, why didn't you say something? I'm like, I don't know. Why didn't you pay attention? Like I can still see you out of my peripheral. It was fine. So I don't know. I think I, my uh, daughter was jealous. She kind of saw how your uh, daughter and your wife kind of just kind of go out on their own and do their own thing. And yeah. my daughter was like, can't we just leave the boys and just go <laughs> shop somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say with my wife and daughter, they, they go there more so just to like go and dick around in downtown Milwaukee than anything. Like, yeah, they spend a few mm-hmm. hours shopping the vendor hall on Saturday, but that's not really what they're for there at all. So yeah, they didn't go into the arcade more than like 30 minutes probably. And it was mostly just to walk through and see what was there. They had no interest. So, which I get it. So I can't complain. Yeah. This was the first year we didn't stay downtown. And I think that might be the way it's going to go now. Really? You didn't like the convenience of being like right across from it. (laughs) There's just not enough for like, if I'm not buying a lot, doesn't the the convenience isn't as good sure Um, and you know it like closes at eight on saturday anyway so it's not like it's like a late really late night or that's true get back somewhere else um but usually it's because you know i bring my whole family most of them don't go friday so it's not fair for them to just sit in a hotel yeah (laughs) really yeah that's a good point i think it's worked out better since that market has opened um, right next to the mm-hmm. venue. Cause that's where my, um, my wife and daughter go on, on Friday night as they go to that, like they call it the third street market hall. And it's basically just like an indoor restaurant and like event center. There's like video games in there and shuffleboard and seven different restaurants and a bar. And then attached to that, there's also like a TJ Maxx and a Coles and some other, so they mm-hmm. go shop all that and it's conveniently yeah. like half a block away. Um, but, but, but before that, you're right. There wasn't a whole lot. It's actually like kind of wild in the short amount of time that they've been doing that downtown, how much that's kind of like revitalized and built up almost around that two or three block area. There's a lot of new stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I guess I could see your point. If, if you're not hauling, piles and piles of games over, which I mean, you used to bring a tote that you would mm-hmm. fill, fill with stuff. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kind of like to just roll the roll out of bed and I, I really like that spring Hill suites one just cause like I hate dealing with the parking ramps and everything anyway. So the fact that they'll valet and they actually yeah. reduce their prices this year. So valet was only 20 bucks a day, which is about what it costs you to park at the parking ramp anyway. So like that's totally worth it for me to just be like, yeah, you deal with the headache, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm waiting to see what happens with my parking. Cause so on Friday I went into the parking ramp and you know, you just assume in the forever history that I've ever parked in these things, you pay at the end. Right. Right. So Friday night was done. It was after midnight and I, uh, go up and there's like a thing on the wall. It's like, you just scan this QR code and pay or whatever. So then I paid it. It was 20 bucks to pay. And then it's like, I got, look at the receipt closer and it's like, um, 
I paid event parking for Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. So you got Friday for free? I don't know. Cause then I just left. Cause there's nobody, there's no gates or anything. It's just like a right. thing that just looks at your license plate or whatever. So then I showed up Saturday and then I, w- we left at whatever time and I yep. tried to pay again. And they're like, Oh, you already paid. Cause I put in my license plate and they're like, yeah, you're good to go. Oh, you already nice. paid. So I just left. So I don't know if they're going to be like, Hey, Buddy, you were there Friday and Saturday. You owe us money, but we'll see. Ah, that's pretty sweet if it works out that way. Did you, is that the one next to the Hilton you parked at, or a different one? Uh, next to the Coles on the other side there. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's funny. Well, that could work out well. I, I mean, God, they, it's not worth investing in the technology to, like, crack down and, like, you know, video surveillance cars, you know, to for them. I'm sure they don't give a shit, so. Right. Probably got a free free night, so we'll see. I don't know what they do. I mean, I guess they could find my license and track me down somehow. But I mean, worst case, you charge another twenty bucks. I think so. Right. I mean, I I tried to. I tried to pay, and it wouldn't. The app wouldn't let me. So you tried to be a good citizen. Yeah, that's yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, it. Uh, it is funny too because I think both you and I left the shows like pretty early on Saturday. Like we were kind of done by six, like, yeah, you know, in previous years, it had been like every minute I had to soak it out of that to try and try and stay. But well, it was just exhausting because in the, you know, you would try and play games toward the end of the night. And it was, it was just no letting up. It was just constant. Yeah. yeah and once the kids are kind of over it, then it's like, well, and at some point, cause we did the Friday night too. Like, my back is just killing me from constantly mm-hmm. walking and standing and playing. You know, you're, Cause you're standing and then tensing up playing arcade games. So it's just like, it does a number on you. Yeah. Even my son was bitching by like, I don't know, 11 o'clock on Saturday that like, Oh, my legs are so tired. Like we ended up eating lunch at like basically noon. Cause he just couldn't, we had to leave by like 11 and go back to the hotel for a bit. Yeah. Well, I had, my kids had that too, but then they were like, Ooh, the scooter game's open. And then they'd sit there and pump <laughs> their legs on. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. Your legs are tired. Yeah. Yeah. You're not that tired. Well, yeah, we got to meet up for lunch at our favorite place. Mm-hmm. That worked out well. Docs. Smoke house. Yep. Unofficial sponsor of the annual MGC episode of weekend rental podcast. So we were worried, but it was the same. It was the same. And they were actually not busy at noon on Saturday, like not compared to what they were when I stopped and got fries later. Um, so yeah. And they actually sat us all at one table this time. Weird concept. When you ask for a table for so many people, <laughs> they don't split you across two. Yeah. And uh, the, yeah, it was delicious. Yeah. the I think that's the new meta for finding lunch. Um, going at actual lunchtime. I always thought like, <laughs> Oh, you don't want to go at lunchtime because right. You know, you go middle of the afternoon where nobody's thinking about lunch. But yep. I think everybody thought that way. So yeah. the real meta is to actually just go at, at lunchtime. Time. I agree. Yeah, it was like one third capacity, I feel like. But yeah, food yeah. was great as always. The turkey. I, w- I will say they seem to have like sliced the turkey thinner this year, which I didn't appreciate. Because I always liked that you mm. were getting like side bacon cut of like Turkey. I mean, it was still delicious, but it gets cold Mm -hmm. faster. And then they had like chicken or they had gumbo as a side on the day they were there. And I got that and it was was delicious because it had the sausage and the Turkey and meats in it. It was. Oh, wow. My kids didn't eat any of it. I know you guys got kind of a buffet style going on over there. Cause yeah, they're just handing meats left and right. I think you, you're just gonna have to do what my kids started doing and you just order them like the side dish of mac and cheese and like here you yeah. go. Does that seem to work yeah. this year for us? Because yeah, I've tried to encourage them to eat the meats, but they just don't appreciate it. So which is sad. hmm I I'm kinda of getting that way because we tried to do a whole bunch of new stuff, you know, like we went to Portillo's. And we're like, Oh yeah, it's hot dogs, but it's Chicago style, so they didn't like anything that was on it. Mm-hmm. They just wanted a hot dog with 
<laughs> ketchup on it. It's like, oh gosh, that's the one thing they don't put on it is ketchup. <laughs> right, you can't ask for that. Yeah, it's funny when we when we ate that Friday night. And my son's eating. He orders the pho, and your son's just looking at him like he's an alien eating like God knows what out of that bowl. <laughs> Which I don't know. Like our kids are weird in that aspect. It's because I don't know if it's just because we've always like Jill, my wife and I have just kind of always liked that stuff. So since they've been little, we just kind of took them to that sort of stuff for the so for the most part especially my son like he'll eat damn near anything he also disgusts me though because like he'll eat like squid and he loves <laughs> mussels and stuff which i think are basically just boogers so i don't know yeah <clears throat> he's easy to uh please still my my daughter is way more picky and it's why she got the mac and cheese at doc so mm-hmm. she said the turkey was disgusting and i about disowned her so <laughs> I'm also like a big fan of collard greens. I don't know. Like, I don't know why more places don't have that around here. Cause like, God, they're good. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were amazing. I didn't try them there. I should have. Uh, it, I mean, been, it's hard to make a, a vegetable bad when you like put it in broth and add bacon. You know, you could pretty much put yeah. snot in there and I'm going to be like, Oh, this is great. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I was jealous of your pulled pork though. I should have mm-hmm. maybe gotten the two plates. That was pretty good. That was pretty full. Yeah. Docs is still great. I'm glad that our fears of new ownership and it being ruined didn't, uh, didn't take place. So I will say they, they need to work on that bathroom though. I don't think I've ever been in a (laughs) restaurant bathroom that smelled more like just bus station or like gas station, like stale piss, like, I don't know what you got to do. Send a kid in there at the end of the night with bleach. It, that's unacceptable. Like it was gross. That was pretty bad. It just hit you like a wall as soon yeah. as you open the door. When that's worse than the convention bathroom, <laughs> you got a right. problem. Uh, man. Yeah. Speaking of that, like when they have that many people there, there were multiple times where I tried to go take a piss. And I'm like, I am not queuing up There's in a line. Like, like I'm just going to wait. Yeah. <clears throat> that's how, you know, it's a, a well attended event when, Every yeah. bathroom is like out the door. That's like, you don't see that except for like concerts or sports games, like at arenas and stuff. You know what I mean? Right. They're going to have to get the piss troughs in, those <laughs> thing, in there. Oh God. I love a good piss trough. Why did that go away? More people, more yeah. places need to bring those back. Except in the unfortunate situations where I don't know if you've ever been in the situations where you're at the piss trough, but it's also turned into the puke trough. And then you're oh, just waiting gosh. to watch the puke slide down in front of you as you're, that is not, that's a spring break experience that I had and <laughs> one I would like to not repeat. <laughs> and actually my buddy was further down the line from me and he, it disgusted him so much. He also contributed to the puke. Oh, trough. So it just it was the fun that kept on. It was just puke at just that point. Kept, kept on giving. Yeah. Yeah. But I did notice, um, I don't know what it is with Wisconsin, but they're like quick trips or whatever gas stations they are. Um, mm-hmm because we had a couple of them, they've got the delightful, uh, you know, chest to floor urinals. I don't know what it is about a urinal that just like sinks all the way to the floor that pleases me, but I think it's like probably the greatest thing ever. If I could have one in my home, I would. I guess, but then you always look down at your shoe and there's like some, like uh, there's some spray that ends up on your shoe. But you avoid the splashback on your hands, which my son and I were yeah. trying to explain to my wife, like, cause he loved it too. He's like, yeah, it's great. It doesn't like splash back. And I was like, why does the peak get on your hands? I'm like, well, I'm like, think about a urinal. You're literally pissing onto a wall from about, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. 10 to six yeah. inches away. I mean, it's coming back no matter what you do. So yeah. Boy, this, this, this podcast took a weird <laughs> turn. didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're we're covering every inch of MGC this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was good. I I can say I'm at the point where I probably would not be upset if I missed a year in MGC anymore cuz there's not much I haven't seen or done and as much as I like it, it's kind of an exhausting 4-day sprint and if my kids weren't so in love with it, I probably would maybe not be going as often I, I could probably yeah. do from like a year or two away. Yeah. I mean, I did a year away that one time and it was like fine. Yeah. Kind of missed it, but 
I mean, this year especially, like, after everything, and then an eight-hour drive in the rain Mm. the entire way, was that was a little bit rough. uh, Usually you're, you know, the ride back usually isn't too bad, and you're just kind of like, just kind of zoned out and just kind of recharge your battery a little bit just by sitting in the car but this was yeah you had to be paying attention and be on your game the entire ride home and that was exhausting yeah and it was heavy rain like from madison to all the way home for both of us which Mm -hmm. for anyone listening that's that's a good seven hours of driving that you're doing kind of white knuckling it the entire time and it was like that's hard it was, you know, it's just cool enough too that you were like always questioning, like, okay, is this starting to freeze? Like, do I need to be, you know, more careful? Um, so yeah, not great. It's it wasn't the worst we've had, but no, it's not just by any means. The the um the duration was just there yeah. was no. It takes a mental no toll. Yeah. It is funny though, like even my wife and I were talking how. It seems like when you get to like Eau Claire as you're going out there, like Eau Claire to Madison seems like a fucking eternity. Mm-hmm. But when you're headed back, like I feel like you go from Milwaukee to Minneapolis in like an hour and a half. Like it just all goes so fast. Yeah. Um, which is wild. But oh God. I was so pissed too. So I don't know if I told you about this, but on the way there, you know, we stopped it. Well, you guys stopped in Madison too and went to the zoo. Well, then we ate and I went to go get gas. And on this particular exit onto Interstate from Madison, there's two gas stations across the road from each other, but it's four lanes of traffic. So I just happened to be closer to the one. So I go and I pulled up both my card. <laughs> no, they're not. One's an Amico, <laughs> one's a shell. And I went to the shell and I should have known better because the motherfuckers did not have a sign displaying their gas price. It was four dollars a gallon, and I didn't realize it until what I had already swiped my card. Literally across the street was three forty nine. I was oh like, "You my gotta gosh. be kidding me!" So they were just totally scamming people. It cost me fifty dollars to fill up our little car, which was bullshit. I was so pissed that, off. That's that's damn near illegal. Yeah. Uh, it was, I mean, wow. it's, it's just a grift, like 100%. You know, they know exactly what they're doing. And I like, yeah, I had to do the double take because I was like, oh, that says 349, right? You know, because the sun's like glaring off of it. And I looked down, I'm like, shit, that's a nine. I'm like, what the fuck? So then I thought about doing the, well, do I just pump like five gallons? But I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not going to stop again. But yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. That's Total scam. Wild. Wow. Total scam. So if you're in Madison, don't go to the shell near the mall. It's not good. So you've been warned. Uh (sighs) I don't know. I'm curious to see, though, what they say attendance wise. Usually Dan takes a couple days off. Dan Lucen's the guy who's Mm -hmm. one of the co-founders and basically it's his full time job to run the thing. In general, you get an email that tells you like attendance records and things. And last year, I know they said they got over 10,000. I'm guessing you can add a few more thousand of that this year based on what we saw. So pretty wild. I how successful that show continues to be. I would have laid money down that it was going to be less this year. Yeah. Given how the economy is and how much I just feel like in general, the Retro scene. Collector space, at least, is is yeah. decreased. But man, I was I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I, I I was thinking the same as you, and was shocked at how packed it was. Which good, you know, good on good on that convention for doing that. I mean, makes a lot of people real happy, and I'm sure it's. I can't imagine like those guys that put that like you, you, you feel like I bet you, they feel like they're probably on the verge of like complete nervous breakdown, like for three months out of the year, mm-hmm. you know, trying to pull the thing together at the last minute and stuff's going sideways. And yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah I mean, then, just the amount of people and stuff that happens just in guys games and beer room, you know? Yeah. And then you put that on a times 20 scale. Mm hmm. 
it's pretty nuts. Yep. I still stand by of all the conventions I've been to. This one is my favorite, especially now that in its current incarnation, I, I miss yeah. the old, like small, like scrappy days, but what they've turned it into is pretty goddamn incredible. So, Yeah. I, I, I do miss like the big arcade room, you know, the, the, yeah. the crazy arcades that you don't play. You're, you're never seen, you know, but I guess I don't, you just, I don't miss just go to snow. galloping ghosts for that. That's, yeah, true. that's true. But yeah, that old arcade room, you're right. Like there was some amazing stuff in there back when pinball was a much smaller part of the show, but it was in that hill or Sheraton. And it was like a low ceiling, tiny room mm-hmm. with no ventilation. So it was just like BO and farts, like mm-hmm. just, and you'd be sweating your ass off. It was <laughs> fucking brutal. Your, your hair is just like that. You can feel the stack static electricity just in the air. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. There were some arcade cabs there. You'll likely never see again. And yeah. And that was back when they were, they were happy. Like galloping ghost would bring stuff. I don't think they've yep. been bringing stuff, um, uh, but they would bring a lot of really cool machines back then. I don't know what, yeah, why that stopped or how, yeah. but yeah, I wonder <clears throat> what happened there. Maybe it just became too much work and, you know, I mean, Inevitably, yeah, a lot of stuff breaks. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've been to Galloping Ghost, you can only imagine the hell it must be to try and get any <laughs> machine in or out of that fucking place. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. Ugh. Yeah. Well, covered MGC a lot more thoroughly than I thought we would, but maybe we can get to uh, our staff picks before we move on to. Or we can rental. I'll, I'll go first with my staff pick. I don't, it's not going to be a long one, but I got that new Sum 41 album that came out at the end of March, their final farewell album. They're on their farewell world tour. Now I think they play their last couple shows in Toronto beginning of next year um, when they're finally done, but they put out a double album, heaven, heaven, hell. I don't know. It's like, I don't know how you say the title. It's like heaven X hell. So I don't know if like one, I, I don't know if it's like heaven cross hell or if it's just heaven and hell. It's not and, but well, if they're just yeah, independent, it's not and, and. that's black, black Sabbath. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So basically what they did with this one is, you know, they, they haven't really been the pop punk band that they became famous for in a long time. Um, they kind of tried to revisit that around 2006. They put out like an album that felt like a throwback to what had made them popular early on after they went heavier with Chuck, but um, they've basically been like more of like a power metal, like or cheese metal band the past ten years. Really? Um, so their last two albums have been were really the last one especially was I love as a metal album. It's not really a punk album. So what they did with this one is Heaven is just more pop punk. Like they kind of went back to their, you know, fat lip, um, does this look infected sound and that's more what that is. And then the hell side is just heavier stuff, but it's not as heavy as what they've done with 13 voices or the one previous to this. Um, but it is still very good and very, uh, guitar focused. There's a lot more solos and stuff on the second side. It's only 20 tracks, only 50 minutes. You know, because typically if you're a punk rock kid, you're used to a 20 minute to 30 minute album. So it makes sense that mm-hmm. you know, two albums is an hour. Um, they've been doing the whole press circuit, you know, and the band's talking about how this is where the lead singer, you know, it's like, oh, this is the album I've always wanted to make. Greatest album I've ever done. I'm not going to say it's that, but I'm going to say for a band that's been around as long as they have. Um, <clears throat> it's a very nice farewell and there's a lot of quality tracks on there. So at the very least, give it a listen um, because I think a lot of people just kind of stopped following them after f- does this look infected and really yeah. their whole catalog is pretty solid. I would say their their return to pop punk in 2006 with underclass hero is skippable. It's not that it's bad. It just feels like a band trying to do the thing that made them famous, but they put out an album following that called screaming bloody murder that I think is kind of a masterpiece. And then the two 
rock or heavier metal focus albums following it, I think are really good too. So give this one a look, maybe check out like the 10 to 15 years that are discography that you didn't know existed. Cause it's all good. Yeah. I mean, I'm guilty of that. Cause I basically, you know, you have the two big ones that they made and after that, I never really looked into it at all, you know? So yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to, especially when you say it's, you know, a little bit more metal, that's a little bit more my, yeah, that's a good mix for me. So I think that would be uh, right up my alley. Yeah. What was, I should find the name of the one right before this one. Um, that'd be the one I think you'd really like is, let's see, what's that one called? I forget. Oh, order and decline. Yeah. You'd, you'd like that one. That is 2019. That is just a straight metal album and it's awesome. Okay. There's like so many epic guitar solos in it. Yeah, so that's mine. Just a yeah, nice little send off from a pretty awesome band from our youth. Yeah, I would do. Is it they're just not? Is was there a reason they're stopping, or is it just kind of like I think its course? It's yeah, I think the lead singer is just like you know, you know, in interviews he's like, well, I started this band when I was sixteen. You know, he's gone through a lot of stuff too with his wife trying to commit suicide like 11 years ago or whatever, Mm -hmm. him basically going into a hospital and being told he was going to die from his drinking. Like, you know, and he's had a bunch of health issues since then. He's now sober, but it's like, you know, it's been his whole life and he's probably exhausted and the toll it's taken. So I think it's just kind of, I would imagine a band like that where yes, they're big. They, they have like pretty good Spotify numbers, but, they've always had to put in the work, especially in the like post, you know, MTV years. Like I, I have to imagine when you hit like 40 something, you're just like, I can't, I can't keep doing this forever. Right. I I did watch an interview with the band and some of the band members were just like, yeah, I really wish we were just going to keep going. He's like, no, we're, we're done. He's like, we're never getting back together. This is it. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, Could you imagine singing Fat Lip for 30 years, though? Like, right. That's, that would be a... Well, and it's funny, that too. That would drive you, me nuts if I had to sing that song for that many years. Yeah. And it's funny when you watch, like, if you watch any of, like, their concert and festival stuff from, like, the last few years, they'll do Fat Lip, but they play a lot of, like, the metal stuff that mm-hmm. you can tell their new... The fan base in general is just not there for, and they don't get it. Because uh, they really go on stage these days and, like, treat it like they're a metal band and it's just like the crowd's like kind of into it. And then they get to fat lip and like everybody loses their shit. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to imagine that was a song they were sick of playing back in like 2002 <laughs> and they've had yeah. to do it ever <laughs> since. Yeah, Still a great song, but yeah, very much a what 17 year olds mentality Yeah, for a, for a song. Yeah, um, you're just never gonna, you know, reach the same high. So it's like, well, no, if it's just it, exponential decline. Well, what's the point, right? Right, and the resurgence is there right now. Like a lot of those legacy pop punk bands are getting their highs again. So that's only gonna last for a while, and then you're just becoming the nostalgia act. So it's mm-hmm. like, get in. Well, that's still popular, but people are still buying the new stuff, and then don't find yourself being like, you know, the cruise ship or fair circuit band you know what i mean yeah like eve six coming to rib fest this year like you don't want to be Eve Six. i mean <laughs> i still like eve six but yeah a band that's only relevant because their lead singer is amazing on twitter, twitter yeah. <laughs> it's not for the music anymore no. uh how about you what's your staff pick my staff pick is so there's been a trading card game a disney trading card game that the kids have been kind of looking at it's been almost impossible to get it's been very popular Um, sold out a lot of places um until recently the kids been able to buy it learn how to play so we played a couple couple rounds of that it's it's kind of it's kind of cool there's no um you know most of those card games like magic has lands and Pokemon has energy cards. There's none of that stuff in there. So it's kind of nice to just not have like a deck full of that garbage that you just need to have in a deck, you know? 
you just kind of use your existing cards and decide which one you want to play and which one you want to use as a resource to okay. yeah, do an attack or whatever. And you can attack each other's characters, but the main thing that you need to do to get uh, to win the game is you just have to get to 20 points and each character has different point values and stuff like that. So it's kind of an interesting take on, on a collectible trading card game. Um, so yeah, we've been playing that and and then the new set just recently came out. So we saw that at MGC and the kids were pretty excited about that. My uh, one son bought one pack and he hit, uh, like a $40 Ursula card. So he was pretty excited. (laughs) So are these like Pokemon prices for packs, like six, $7 a pack or. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was five dollars he paid for one yeah okay well it's at least affordable then to get into yeah and it sounds like the yeah, game is a little more enjoyable than pokemon right and it seems like like they hold their value a little bit better than pokemon pokemon like you look at even the night the cool things it's like oh they're like a dollar you know there's not right. much much value yeah, disney disney fandom is hard to uh Hard to slow down, so I could see how that would be yeah. a good investment. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. What's but that what's it called? Uh Disney Lorcana. Lorcana, okay. But it's pretty cool. Is they it, have some cards, you know, they have like Scrooge McDuck and they have some old stuff that you know. Is it only animated era, stuff so. or do they have any live action like properties? I don't think I've seen any live action stuff. It's all animated stuff, but okay. you know, there's Disney afternoon stuff. There's a bunch of kind of stuff that you wouldn't think that they would really get into, but oh, that's cool. <laughs> Especially for the nostalgia grab, even if you're not into the game, then at that point, at least you get like some characters that you have a childhood attachment to. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. I'll have to keep an eye out for that we'll one. See. I have not come across it. We'll see, you know, the, those type of things come out and then they're popular and then they don't, the people that make the game mess it up or, you know. Sure. Although I would say Pokemon has messed up the game quite a bit over the years, yet that still keeps going, so. Yeah. It's too big to fail. Right. Hmm. I'll have to, I'll have to keep an eye out for those. We've been playing a lot more board games lately, so. Mm-hmm. We did, uh, I'll just, uh, do an addendum is uh, we went to five below on the way back. So, Oh, nice. Did you get uh, zillionaires on Mars? The one in St. Cloud didn't, or Monticello, I think didn't have it. Couldn't find Astros. it there. So did you find any decent games? To pick found up? some. Yep. Found yeah. some, uh, there was one called like Gen Z versus the world trivia. So we haven't tried that yet, but I, I looked at that one and I was like, I'm not going to know any of these answers. So I just <laughs> put it back. I'm like, it's just going to make me feel old. Yeah. Uh, it was funny though because I was explaining to Amanda those uh, Japanese sodas that we had, yeah, and how they work with the marbles and everything. And yep. then, sure enough, Five Below has them. Oh yeah, we bought we bought them there. Yep, they got the my daughter loves the the bubble teas there too. She, she gets those yep. all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think we bought one of those too. Like make your own bubble tea or something like that. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Five Below is a all right store for like cheap crap. I mean, like it entertains mm-hmm. the kids. I honestly like since the one moved into town here, we just do like the uh, crazy Christmas and we'll just go spend like 50 bucks on each kid. And it's just like, oh, you got a, like a literal mountain of presents. You know, it's yep. quantity over quality, but they still get a kick out of like opening like a bunch of crap that we throw out inevitably like two days later. But. Yeah, that's definitely going to be in our rotation, like that type of thing, because it, you know, I mean, for five dollars, you're still getting a good quality, it seems like, out of the stuff that you do get. So, yeah, yeah, I would say for the most part, their stuff is, I mean, you got to watch some of the stuff. Like, I feel like the household stuff is kind of a ripoff. Like, they'll try and sell you like hand sanitizer, like face wipes for like five dollars. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, yeah. no, this actually costs two bucks, but yeah. yeah. And the t shirt wall, too, like getting a t shirt for five bucks is a good deal even if it washes off in like two washes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 100 so, yeah. and actually a lot of the ones we've gotten have like hung in there pretty well the problem huh. that 
most of the time we run into is just that that t-shirt wall is decimated. So like, you're just basically like sifting through piles of rags yeah. to see what the design is. And yeah, it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do. I do love it for like board games and stuff. It's a great little spot. Yeah. If you're having a good time with us at Weekend Rental, I think you might enjoy all the great geeky stuff found on the Geekade Podcast Network. They've got podcasts about games, music, movies, and more. Plus, if you order off their secret menu, also known as the Geekade Patreon, you just might find an exclusive movie podcast hosted by Ryan and myself. Check it out over at geekade.com. And hey, if you'd like to turn Weekend Rental into a true multimedia experience, Our YouTube and Twitch channels might just be for you. All right, so the weekend rental, of course... For the uninitiated, is a, it's a game we pick uh, for a given system. We picked the Super Nintendo this time. We uh, are going with Blues Brothers. Um, we play that game independently, and then we kind of make our decision on, as to whether we would buy, rent, or burn that game. Burn meaning light it on fire. And uh, yeah, Blues Brothers for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. A console that came out well after children were aware of what the blues brothers was. <laughs> so I, it's interesting is, to me that this was a license on that platform. This was a long running series. Apparently I had totally forgotten. There's an NES one. There's an NES blues brothers. There's an NES blues brothers. Oh, I don't own that. I don't think I've even seen that. I, I yeah. gotta look. And now. there's a game boy and there's super Nintendo. And then there's blues brothers. 2000 on the 64 so oh this is a okay, video so game it's, series it's a port though so these are the same this is one of those things where it like came out on so this is got to be a late release on the nes i think the price is on that 50 bucks look yeah probably about 50 60 i think wow i had no idea or maybe i didn't forgot I, yeah, I had completely forgot about that. And Game Boy, is the Game Boy one just another port of the same thing, Who too? Knows? Yeah, but this this game is actually a sequel to the first one, so or so it's a completely new game compared okay, to so the NES one. The cover art looks the same between the Game Boy, Blues Brothers, and the Super Nintendo one. So they all okay. share a similar... So it would seem to me that they probably all came out around the same time period, right? Like probably within a year or so of each other. Yep. The NES one is 55 loose. Super Nintendo is around 25. Game Boys are around 30. Interesting. I mean, they have to be somewhat rare because yeah, who's buying Blues Brothers games? Right. Yeah, certainly uncommon. I, I mean, you don't come across them. No, but just apparently not a valuable IP. Wow, that's crazy. I would have never guessed there was so many versions of Blues Brothers on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one the one console where it made sense would have been like, yeah, if there was an Atari 2600 version of Blues Brothers, I'd have gotten that. Yeah. But, you know, but yeah, pretty well. I mean, I guess NES makes more sense than Super NES, but. Yeah, I we we, we did some play of this two over on um twitch so maybe some of you caught that or caught our post stream video as it hung out there for a while but i don't know this is definitely one of those platformer games that feels like somebody made a generic platforming game and they just shopped around or somebody was shopping around with a license to get a game made and they just slapped characters into a world that has zero to do with the source material. I mean, it was other than the blues brothers being in there and some musical elements, not even really Which, musical elements, but visual musical elements. There, there was nothing like you start out in a forest. 
there's no blues music playing. You're collecting you're notes and records. Right. But yeah. it makes then no you're back in the sense. Forest. There's no progression feel to it. No, tons of perma death. It felt like almost like a Amiga era platforming. Yeah, game. I think it was. I th- okay. I mean, the original when I was looking at the NES one, that one was definitely a port of an Amiga, an Amiga game. Um, okay. It's this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the same for this one, but it it does have that feel to it. The levels are super short. Like you. Yeah. If you knew, if you could know your route, I looked this up. The, the, the speed run is 17 minutes. Really? And there's like 30 some levels. So, so we saw at least half the game. When 30 we streamed seconds it. a piece. Pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty close. And it's, you know, 30, 30 seconds a level, which I could see. I mean, mm-hmm. Doing it legit, I could see people beating these levels in that amount of time. They were pretty short. I think the thing that bothers me, too, is like it does the worst thing that a platformer can do, and that's know it's a bad game, so make it a race against the clock. And then it has the worst version of a clock because it's not consistent. Like They literally adjust the clock time based on what the perceived level length. Yeah. Which is just a terrible game design. They're just winging it. They're just like, oh, what do you think to put there? Right. And and then so the collectibles are are uh, final records, which you use for ammo to throw at enemies. <laughs> right. Um. Every level you start at zero. They you don't keep your records. You start at zero, so you, but there's records all over the place. I don't, there's no scoring for the records, I don't think. Right. So there's no point bonus for, there's no incentive to collect them other than you need them for your attack. Right. But they place them as if they're collectibles because they'll put like 10 of them in like a pyramid shape or, you know, like it just seems like they should count for, for points or something. My thought is maybe you get one an extra life if you get a hundred. We I don't know if I ever proved that. Yeah. To be the case, but um I don't know if there's levels that even had a hundred in them. Well, and that's like, you know, beyond the records as a collectible, like the limited and sporadic power ups that you get are pretty pointless too. There's one that makes you like ripped and you like muscle through your shirt. But we couldn't really tell that that did much for you other than allows you to take one more hit. Um, there mm-hmm. was an invincibility thing, um, which had, you know, if you're going to have an invincibility power up, like have a good animation to like kind of indicate that there really, it really wasn't good. I think like there's your character music flashes. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's like extra lives. So it's already very bare bones. Like all the enemies are stupid. I mean, it's just like generic, like porcupines and, you know, pit traps and electric traps and levels, it just sucks and the levels are very like um square so they're like they'll they'll go vertical and then they'll go then they'll like razor back down to the other way and it's <laughs> yeah. so it's like you know it's just to save memory in whatever tiles that they were right uh, putting this in it it just seemed like it was kind of yeah yeah, it's such a weird Budget. thing to see, like, almost every level just wraps around in itself, you know, and it's never interesting. It's just mm-hmm. you know, left to right, you know, it's it's really lame. Um, and the music is pretty awful, I think. That's that's the one aspect of this game they could have, you know, at least gotten that right and tried to make something that sounded like blues appropriate to fit the theme. One would say they needed to get that right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would have been important. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty bad. And you could pick either brother from the outset, but it didn't change the gameplay at all. Um, mm-hmm. other than maybe it adjusts your players. hitboxes a little bit. What would you do with two players though? It would be so frustrating because you have to like stay yeah, on that screen. So. Mm-hmm. Once there's a two player mode, that was cool that we didn't try, but 
Yeah, I think the part where I lost my shit was that last level that we got to during the stream, at least, where you get to a level where there's like what appears to be an enemy on your shit right away. And then you realize that, no, it's like a flying sky dragon that as a blues brother, I'm supposed to hop on and traverse across the screen. <laughs> and this is now like a scrolling, like obstacle avoiding level. It, that's where I was like, they, they clearly didn't try and they clearly developed something that had nothing to do with the property at all. Yep. It's just not even dumb. There's not even a screen to say, you know, like some, some text to say what, right what's going on here and it's such an easy Nothing. movie that, to gamify you know it's got all the things like we talked about like there's there's police chases there's like bar fights there's it's like there's a million things you could have done that would have fit into the continuity of the film and none of that <laughs> is even like looked at whatsoever uh, and I think the worst part of yeah. it is, is it isn't inherently bad like it's not a great platformer but it's perfectly fine for what it's doing mm -hmm. but i don't know <laughs> maybe put a little more work into it yeah that's th or that's just use a different license i yeah i wish they would have just done nothing at all and put this out because it would have been a perfectly fine platformer it would have been nothing amazing right um, especially for super nintendo i think it's kind of weak yeah for a super well, nintendo game and when you think about Super Nintendo, like all the rage was come up with your dumb, fluffy mascot character. Like they could have made up anything and put it in there and it probably would have sold better than putting Blues mm -hmm. Brothers on it to kids who are that's not going to appeal to whatsoever. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, the one thing that infuriated me was in this game. Any game that you uh, jump to a rope or a chain or something like that, you should be allowed to just hold right and not have to have an issue, right? Because mm -hmm. you're holding on to the rope. And I think the general consensus is that you're not going to let go of the rope until you press the jump button. Right. <clears throat> this game does not do that. You, uh, if, if you... They have chains in these factory levels that you jump to the chains um, to see uh, Elwood's uh, fit ass mm. just yes. right on this chain. Um, they really yeah. emphasize the detail in the butt crack and his back <laughs> yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you just hold right, you just fall right off the chain. Yeah. It's uh, kind of wild. Did, well, did and it's a bizarre really... choice too, because like the chain is very wide. So it's like, why mm -hmm. didn't they, you, you know, give someone the option to even wiggle a little left and right on the chain if you want, but yeah, to have it instantly yeah. drop if you're not hitting up or down is stupid. Yeah. If you had the wiggle, at least it would give you feedback to be like, okay, you have control of yourself on this chain. So you can't, you shouldn't go too far left, too far right. Right. Yep. Um, but no, it's just, <laughs> just off or on and if you hold the stick for too long it you're off um took me a while to uh recalibrate my brain to play those levels but yeah yeah it's not an intuitive platformer in that sense and then just some of the physics too because there's so many moving platform sections where, like the physics just don't feel good in those yeah. situations and then we like we talked about too where it's one of those games where it's got the um, like three fifths perspective. So every time you do like the left and right, like that screen has to like slowly adjust and catch up with like your purview. And it's just sucky for trying to like plan out platforming jumps and trying to see what's maybe ahead off screen. Like it, yeah, it just kind of becomes nauseating. It's not as bad as yeah, some games we've any... seen. For sure. But yeah, if you're trying to do, you know, some like left or right, quick left or right adjusting. Yeah. It, it it's it's pretty rough. Yeah. The only thing that kind of saves it is at least they like really reined it in with like the movement speed. So it's not like one of those quick flicker back and forths. But but then again, that presents yeah. its own problems because 
you try to look behind you and now you're waiting a second and a half for mm-hmm. the screen to move over. It's really dumb. <clears throat> really dumb. Yeah, I don't know. I, I There's probably not a whole lot more to say about it. It's just so inherently generic and right down the middle in every single way for a game that I don't know. I don't know really who it's for, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? What would you give it on the Byron Burn scale? You know, honestly, like this should be a rent because it's it's a fine game to play. But I think because it's a Blues Brothers game and they just took it in a direction that does not make any sense for that property, I have to consciously give it a burn. Um, yeah. yeah, it just it was fine, but it the, like you said, there's so much stuff that is like you just missed the mark. You just you didn't understand totally. what you were supposed to do. Yeah, I I. I think I could give it a rent, but this would be like, this is the worst kind of rent. This is the kind that you rent to know that you would never buy it. And then you would also never rent it again. <laughs> sure. So it's essentially yep. a burn. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've been more, I, I've had rents that were, would have pissed me off more as a kid, like, you know, Dick Tracy or Bart versus the space mutants. But this feels, mm-hmm. this feels pretty close to, I would have been immediately regretting my weekend take home rental and know that that's what I've been stuck with. But the fact that it's but, like the fact that it's a playable game is the only thing that gets it there for me. It is not a yeah. good game though, especially as a fr- fan of that franchise. Like I wanted so much better for it. <laughs> yeah. It, we did play the 64 version for 2000. Yeah. For that seems like one that minutes. might be worth it. Yeah. You, uh, you uh the first level's in a prison, so they at least <laughs> they started out somewhere that's yeah at least in the theming wise with the movie. Yeah, I think down the road. I need a break from the N64 for a while, but that one might be one we should we should dust off at some point. Yeah. And I am kinda interested now to look at the the NES one to see if it's uh I'm guessing it's kind of the same type of thing where it's just generic levels and You'd think so. But, I'm curious in the Game Boy one. Gotta look for yeah. that. watch some footage. Well, I guess it's another Byron Burn down and another episode down. And another MGC down. Yes. A lot of stuff happening. Um I during our stream, which you can watch on twitch.tv slash weekend rental. We're usually doing it on Tuesdays on the off weeks. Yes. Um playing the game that we're gonna play uh, for Byron Burn. We kind of were talking about like what properties would be the the latent awakenings into video game form that appealed to older dumbasses, forty year old dumbasses like us, you know. Mm. Where obviously this Blues Brother thing was selling to those people back in the right. day. Um so if I want to hear on an email or on Twitter at Weekend Rental Podcast at gmail.com you know like what is that property nowadays for us that's a good question but yeah send us an email let me know but until next time be kind rewind bananas